Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode four of The Expanse. This episode is called Godspeed. Are they seriously going to equip the Naboo now? Are we going to have like a battleship Naboo? Fucking hell. That last episode, as you can tell, I'm in the same top. Nine times out of ten when I say I've got to watch the next episode right now, I like calm down while I'm doing the review and then I've got to export the file and stuff and so there's a little bit of a break and then I think, oh no, do you know what, I'm going to go on and edit that episode and and leave it and I can't. <laughs> I literally can't. I have to watch the next episode. I felt like I didn't do a great review of the last episode because I was just so on the fritz about everything that was going to happen and just wanting so badly to get on to the next episodes. But Jesus, what? There was so much going on and I don't take notes. Most of you would have realised by now when I'm doing, when, when I look to the left, I'm not looking at notes. So I've just got a window over here and it helps me to sort of look out the window and have a think and then look back and I don't. I don't take any notes while I'm actually watching. I think mostly because it, whenever I see reactors taking notes, it bothers me that they're looking away from the screen. I'd rather just let them work through <laughs> work through the episode afterwards than take the notes. But that's one of those episodes where I, I really wished I was taking notes because so much was going on. And again, I'm probably going to get way more in the edit once I've had a chance to look at it. But the things I definitely didn't talk about, which which I may have, one came to me was things are getting to critical mass now with Mars and justifiably so. There's a real showdown now going to be happening between the kind of the hawks on Mars who are like, fuck it, we have had it with Earth continually clipping our fucking wings so that they can retain their sort of primary authority and the flip side on earth is put forward by Erin Wright who says look this could be our last chance to beat Mars meaning I think if they continue to allow Mars to develop unimpeded earth knows Mars is going to end up the superpower and rather than allow that to happen they are continuing to try and drive through a war that will somehow debilitate Mars. But for me, it's like that's always going to be a temporary measure. Like, did they learn nothing from the Boston Tea Party? You can't, you can't hold a colony down. Eventually, if it's got more land, more resources, more space to develop and grow, ultimately that planet is going to be in charge of its own destiny. Unless you want to wipe it fucking out and not have a Mars, you're always going to face a point where little brother becomes a couple of feet bigger than you and stronger and could knock you on your ass. That's exactly how superpowers the world over have reacted throughout history. I think it's great the way that they're depicting it. God, we keep doing this all the time. Just, just stop it. It's, it's completely pointless. It's like trying to stop the tide. You know, you go, oh, I just keep holding my hand out and then maybe the waves will stop. They won't. And obviously that tension happening between the team with Bobby Draper and stuff. The guy who's Martian now, but is tech, I suppose you call him an immigrant. Getting, having to deal with so much shit where people were just, they get hyper anti. And then, you know, and we see this in our countries all the time. You know, if you're watching this from the United States or Europe or the UK right now, um, you can see our countries being, you know, torn apart by this them and us kind of mentality. It's hard to watch because it's it doesn't feel fictional to me. It feels very real. It feels very like... The stuff that I'm seeing in my own country at the moment and um and so it's it's instructive and I think this is one of the big purposes of art is to to have these discussions in a in the sort of non-threatening way that you can when you put something in a in a fictional universe I know still people get dead agitated about it 
if um you know they're on the other side of that political debate but i think it's fantastic to be able to have those conversations just one step removed from the sort of personal and it feels like we are at about three in our countdown from 10 to what is kicking off on Eros. It feels like it's real imminent. We're just about to find out what the fuck is going on. We can hear all these voices, which feels to me like these people be walking about on Eros. I don't know what to expect now. I really don't know what to expect. They sounded like human voices. But again, if if the if the proto molecule is able to um, evolve itself based on whatever species that it takes over, then it would have that ability to communicate. I'm guessing it would be able to develop speech and um, and those sorts of things. But I'm not sure about it having the specific language of the people that it just so happened to inhabit, which is why it makes me feel like I, this sounds so stupid, but I, I just can see all these people on Eros, like almost like the whites in Game of Thrones. And then they got these blue eyes, you know, because they have the blue stuff, and then they get up and like they're these super beings. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just being completely honest about about what is in my head. I think that's all I've got for now that's any different from where I was at the end of the last episode. So I'm going to go into the next one. Um, I'm really anxious about this episode because it don't feel good going in. Um, someone's, I'm ever so sorry that I've forgotten the name of the su subscriber who said this. But if you're watching, you'll know it's you. And um, Maybe put put a comment in the bottom because it'd be lo lovely to have a chat with you about it. They said after um, sort of in a, in a coming episode, you want to stick on Phil, Coll Phil Collins you'll you'll be in my heart which is like the saddest song in the universe ever since i read that comment that song has been going on in my little internal jukebox almost non-stop at least once a day since that message at some point in the day my brain's gone you'll be in my heart unbeknownst to you you have now ensured that phil collins you'll be in my heart is playing in my mind at this point so yeah we're gonna go on into the episode and uh oh i'm not ready <sighs> okay let's have at it so did johnson give avasarala this the derelict stealth ship is that is that what happened oh yes <gasps> Fuck me! Must have been one hell of a fight. Yes! Like this, the ship has one of the fusion drives that were stolen from the bush shipyards. We'll maintain position with the wreck. And we'll await your instructions. What? Hmm. Protogen, that's the company. DNA profiled from those stiffs on the stealth. Their official records show all of them were last employed by Protogen Corporation, and their history's pretty much stopped. Protogen is a subsidiary of Mal Kukowski. Of course, so are half the companies in the system. She knows. That's it. Fred wants me to connect Protogen to the stealth ships. Yes! And to Jules yes! now? Do you really think he's in bed with Aaron Wright? How many people have the resources to wage a private war with a private fleet of ships? Oh, well done. Protogen ran a research base on Phoebe. Tell the villa to push that wreck into the nearest UN and petrol route. Maybe you want it to be discovered? Yes. Because then it won't be a secret anymore. Yes! Oh, she's so smart. I did not even... Well done, Fred. Well done, Fred Johnson. That was a genius move. What's so hurt? Going back to Eros. We need your help. We're done going anywhere with you. Jim, calm down. 
The Inners have been redeploying ships all over the system since Earth blew up Deimos. Eros is unguarded. And it's only a matter of time before someone lands on it and takes a sample or gets infected. What does any of this have to do with him? Miller's leading the demolition team to plant explosives around the docks. It's not gonna work. Even if you mine the docks, if someone wants him badly enough, they'll find a way. That's why we're gonna use that. Knock Eros right into the sun. Did you just say you were gonna use the Nauvoo as a battering ram? <laughs> That's what you said. Well put. What do the Mormons have to say about this plan? We're commandeering the ship. You're insane. What? And you might be too for listening to this lunatic. We're gonna launch the Nauvoo from here, okay? We're gonna shoot her like a bullet toward Eros. Picking up speed. Fred's geeks crunched all the numbers. Velocity, speed, angle, all that crap. <clears throat> so when she hits, Eros is on her merry way. We're gonna detonate the bombs after impact. Controlled explosion that just destroys the docks and cooks the surface. Nobody ever gets in there again. Is it? Cortazar said the proto molecule was building something inside arrows. What if it's a weapon? We need a gunship. Oh, shit. To deliver the bombs and to provide cover in case we run into any hostile. We need the Rossi and her crew. This is gonna destroy you, along with everything you've tried to build here. Somebody's gotta act. It's the right thing to do. Oh my God. He's gonna be in so much trouble. Mm, all right, we're in. <sighs> the Mormons are gonna be pissed. <laughs> the Mormons are gonna be more than pissed. Oh my God, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. This is insane. They are going to try and bunt the sh- And revelations from the discovery of the wrecked stealth ship in the belt continue to reverberate Earthside. Today, UN sources confirm that evidence aboard the ship has been conclusively linked to Protogen Corporation, a subsidiary of Mal Kwiatkowski Mercantile, and that all of Protogen's corporate assets have been frozen, pending a full investigation of the company's ties to OPA terrorist- Yeah. Give me Aaron Wright. Pause. I'm, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back to you, sir. I just wanted to say, yes, I have noticed that while nine-tenths of people seem to be living in little tiny boxes, this guy has got, like, all of the space in the world. It's, it's obscene. It's absolutely obscene. Play. Thank you for coming in, and we appreciate you meeting with us without your legal team. I believe in always clearing up misunderstandings eye to eye. Good. So you had no knowledge of the money being funneled from Protogen to build the fleet of secret stealth ships? Of course not, madam. You need to explain to us how the OPA could infiltrate your company. We do business in every part of the system, so naturally we're going to be a target for corporate espionage and Political radicals. So you believe the stealth ships are the work of OPA moles? That's the theory that our security team is operating under. With such a small project, uh, my team would only be notified if the company exceeded its budget allotment. So these rogue employees managed to make a profit and a war without even going over budget? God, maybe we should get these people on our payroll. <laughs> Protogen is a biotech research company, and it had a government contract on Phoebe Station. Is that correct? I'm sorry, Christian. How is this relevant to the stealth ships? The Martians seemed very intent on destroying Phoebe before the Nathan Hale could secure it. I'm sure that you would have full access to those same records. And here I thought you came in to clear up any misunderstandings. <laughs> We're being polite, Monsieur Mao. But the deputy secretary and I are trying to stop a war. I'm sure Monsieur Mao will personally see that Protogen helps the UN investigation with complete transparency before any more tragedy occurs. Isn't that right? Of course, deputy secretary. I only want what's in the best interest of the system. Cool. I'm not liking the way he's looking at a Vassarala. Why are all of our people being taken off the Navu? Oh, the Union, you can't argue with the Union. That's the standard safety protocol, right? 
So then why are all our comms shut off? Why can't we send messages back to Earth, tell the administration what's been going on? Mm -hmm. The system must be down or something. Why are you lying to us? For your own safety, sit the fuck back down. Is this what you had in mind? This is part of God's plan. Prepare for launch. We're doing this now? Oh my god. Doxis is now close to all the authorized personnel. Doxis is now close to all the authorized personnel. Okay, he's got his gun back. That is gonna piss Jim right off. Why are you doing this? I don't know, I've never done a spacewalk before, and the kid here says it's better than sex. I don't know if he can really make that comparison. Don't say nothing. Me crush ass to dust. Yeah, right. I'm sorry, Diego, I'm just not buying it. You're doing this for Julie. But you know that destroying arrows won't rid us of all the proton molecule. You know what we hid out there. Did you tell Fred? Nope. Uh, this mission, this is on me. But, uh, nice sample. That's on you. You do the right thing with it. Good luck copying me. How is it all? I'm fucking loving Miller right now. She's just like a totem at this point. The Navu is in position. This is crazy. Look at all the little things. You were meant to go to a new sun. Oh. Commence launch sequence. Oh this is fucking amazing. Look at this. And on a recall. I like this plan. I like this plan too, Amos. Good luck and Godspeed. Ooh! Oh my god. Oh my god. This is one of the fucking coolest space sequences I have ever fucking seen. What? Sorry you had to go through that, but we needed to get out in front of this. Well played. You said you had Avasarala on a leash. She knows we're working together. Bullshit. <laughs> she got lucky with the stealth. And your failure to control your own office has compromised this project. Force me to explore other options. That sounds like a threat. You need me. Fly me! Uh, river. Fly me! Uh, river. You need my government's resources and my protection. I need a patron who understands the historic importance of what's happening and can adjust his worldview accordingly. But you're just trying to save your job, so I'll let you get back to it. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Do this, Amos. Drop the ordinance. Roger that. Bombs away. Wow. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> Demolition teams. 
you must finish placing the bombs at the precise locations around Eros docks and be out before the Nabu hit. Impact minus two hours, 57 minutes. How the hell are you about it? Never done no spacewalk ever. I'm more of a city belter. <laughs> Where my detonators? What? Well, you should have busted your ass back to that prison bar on C. Got him right here, Villa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Diego. Oh, my God. Oh. Fucking hell, it's making my stomach go just looking at it. Wow. Miller! Oh shit. Relax, Bumper. Go rock hopper always bring a spare. Oh. I still say you ain't never been late, kid. Here comes the Navu. Wow. But there's definitely something in there. And whatever it is, is generating a lot of heat from inside that rock. Sure as heck I'm not eager to find out what that is, partner. Then let's finish up and get out of here. Hooray. What the heck is that? The voice is on arrows. Getting faster. Is he? Alex, hold on. I've got something here. It's a ship. What? I'm gonna fire up a drone, get some eyes down there, see what's what. Erasmus. Mm. It's hired out of Palace Station. Can you open the airlock? Shouldn't be a problem. Is that a, a hospital ship? Wow, that is the nicest gas ship I have ever seen. That's just odd. Y'all ever seen pirates with state-of-the-art life support systems? In a med bay? In one of the disguise. <laughs> Whoa, what the... Drone's not responding. Target locked the ship. Shit. Done. Can't let it go anywhere. We can't just shoot it. Nobody's shooting anybody. We're being held. Please, don't fire on us. We're here on a peaceful mission. Who are you and what are you doing here? I'm a doctor on a humanitarian mission to give aid to the survivors of Eros. We couldn't get inside. The station is locked down for everyone's safety. And so a hundred thousand people down there have been condemned. Do not attempt to move your ship and prepare to be boarded. What the hell are you doing? You think we're Martian Navy. So hopefully they'll leave without trying to turn us into some political crusade. And if they stay, they die. These people don't deserve that. <sighs> the sooner they're out of here, the better. Oh, my God. Miller, Diogo, pick up the pace. The other teams have finished planting their bombs and they're heading back. I still got two bombs left. We won't be late. I'm OPA now. I fight for the cause. Yeah, I got news for you, pal. The OPA? It's got more gangsters in series. Pause. I'm sorry. Can we do less chatting, more setting of bombs, please? The Navu is on its way, people. Play. Only they don't pay as good. You well, Walla? All right, kid. Here we go. Just go in with your eyes open, huh? Plant the bomb! Why I take advice from a loser like you? That's just it. You should You a real asshole, Miller. So what you gonna do when we finish this? I don't know. Maybe, uh, go back to series. Start selling black market water. Here, there's an opening. Come on. Erasmus, you're to leave the area immediately. If you do not comply, you will be fired upon. Understood, Rocinante. Thank you. We'll get underway as soon as possible. <sighs> oh, my sweet summer child. Hey, keep going. I'll catch up with you. 
Miller! Oh, fuck me. Oh, Miller, I'm worried for you, mate. Please stop. Please go back. Please go back and set the bomb and just go away. What are we doing here? What are you doing, Miller? Oh, she got it. Molecule all over him. Oh shit. Does that mean those people on the ship have been in? Looks like he's been inside. They've been in. Is there a ship name on his vac suit? Oh no. <laughs> Marasmus. Fuck. No! You hacked into Eros. We found your dead colleague in the airlock. I told Doctor Ken not to touch it, but he never listens. He tried to get a sample, but it attacked him. Almost like it felt threatened. Oh, then they're changing course, heading back around Eris. They're trying to use the asteroid to block out jamming. You need to turn your ship around right now and surrender to us. All of you might be infected. We have to be sure. We swore an oath and have a duty to broadcast the truth to the Listen city. to me, Doctor. You have no idea what you're dealing with here. If any one of you are infected, you could wipe out millions. Turn your ship around! We won't. Let you silence us to protect your experiment. If you broadcast, people will come here to investigate and we won't be able to contain it. My name is James Holden. I am not your enemy. We're out of time. If they get the asteroid between our ships, we'll lose our jamming signal uh, and they will be able to broadcast everything they uh, saw inside air. Please, don't make me kill you. If we truly want the same things, then you know what you need to do. <gasps> you get 30 oh, seconds. Go shoot him down. He's gonna have to shoot him down. No! Ten seconds. I feel for you, mate. Miller, you've got high speed debris incoming. Get to cover immediately. Get to cover now! What? Oh, oh fuck off. Are you? Oh, no, 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 no. Get out! No! Oh, fucking hell. Diogo! I, I got a puncture! I need a hand! I got pronouns of my own. Use the feeling. Blink in air! Chest pouch! Chest pouch! Chest pouch! Chest! Yes. <sighs> Can we get the fuck off of here now, please? Thanks for all your help, kid. Kid. Oh, no. Big problem, Pompa. What? Detonator safety got fry. Got to keep finger on the button on time I start. 60 second reset. Best we can do. Jesus. God damn it. This thing blows. Set up all the other bombs. Well, the Navu gets here to screw up the trajectory. This whole thing will be for nothing. Oh no, Diogo's gonna have to sacrifice himself. So, we dead. We. Go. Get back to the ship. Better go before I change my mind and hand this thing back to you. No! <gasps> God. No. No. Rosinante, demolition teams are back on board. 
Guy Molinari is underway, making to clear the blast zone. Understood, Molinari. We're doing the same. Miller. Miller, answer me. Are you all right? You know, I have never been better. Thought we lost you there. Break out the drinks. You earned it. Uh, that sounded awesome. Oh, I really wish I could, but uh, I'm still on arrows. What? Yeah, that debris for you messed up my last bomb. Make sure we didn't come out as waving us. Give me the bomb's transponder code. I'll override it from here. No, nah, wouldn't do any good. I'd never make it out of here. Just make sure the job gets done and get out of here. <sighs> it's you and me now. Miller! He's dead. Dead fitting. Did we miss? What the hell just happened? The Navu just missed. What the fuck? The Navu didn't move. Eros did? Eros did. Oh, shit. Fucking hell. Oh, my God. Try your eyes, mate. Oh, I've got a headache. Oh my god. Don't make me watch three episodes today, The Expanse, you bunch of bastards. Oh my god. Eros moved. They have turned Eros. Oh, fuck me. I don't want to go so far as to say a ship yet. But... They've at least created some sort of thrust power. They've created a means of it moving. Honestly, everything hurts. I've got a sore neck. I've got a sore back of my head. I was so tense right that entire episode. And Miller's... Oh my God, Miller. That man. That man. So we've done all this now. We've... We're joyriding on the Nauvoo. The Mormons must have managed to get a signal out to somebody by now. Oh, God, this is all fucked. We've still got our bombs. Miller has still got the bomb. Is he going to have to explode it? I don't know. Aaron Wright is going to be on the fucking warpath now because well i mean there's two ways it could go he's lost his he's lost now anyway so a couple of things he could do one he could go with wishful thinking and just pretend like nothing ever happened Assume Avasarala knows nothing and cross his fingers that he can just quietly return to business as usual. Two, he's listened to what Mao said and now he's absolutely furious at Avasarala. One, for fucking up his relationship with, with Jules Pierre Mao and two for outsmarting him so he could really want to do massive damage to her now that's another response and in side of that response he could attempt to frame a vasarala he could do all sorts he's a dangerous dangerous man 
because his back's against the wall now or at least he'll feel like it even if it isn't he will feel that way so i don't know how much cold war we're going to get between him and avasarala before it turns into a hot war but my money is still on avasarala i think she is more ruthless than him and i think she is smarter than him the fact that he didn't know that she was on to him tells me that she can she can have him um that doesn't mean i'm not concerned about avasarala i'm very concerned about avasarala but i have faith that she can see this threat from him off um that move from Fred Johnson was fucking genius. It had not even occurred to me. I'd forgotten all about the ship. Even when I saw the ship and a Vassar, I don't know, what the fuck is that? It didn't, didn't register with me at all. I was still thinking, why? I was wondering if there was a stealth ship popped up somewhere. Like, it was that far out of my mind. I didn't even make the connection. Brilliant. That was such a ballsy move. And my only hope is that if we can expose Aaron Wright and Avas because Avasarala has been working with Johnson, that she can, you know, legitimise him in the eyes of, of the UN back on Earth, that maybe he won't have to face such severe consequences for the Nauvoo because if we can... I don't think we're going to destroy this thing. I mean, that's the thing is all of my... All of the happy endings I'm writing for this season um, are predicated on the idea that we're going to actually, you know, blow Eros up. I've got an awful feeling that we're not. Um, it moved. I just, I can't. It moved. It sounded like they were fucking screaming inside. Oh. i got to get in there. I've got to have a look. Which means I've probably got to watch another episode. Dang it. I love you, Miller. That was amazing. That was so brave what he did. And I think, you know, the idea that he realised that he kind of, he felt like he didn't really have a plan after this. And he was seeing Diogo, you know, full of life, full of dreams, full of like that just excitement and energy. And it was absolutely the right call for him to, to allow Diogo the chance to save his own life. And for him to take it. But I'm still super proud of him for making that decision. I just think it was really, really beautiful. And um, I hope he doesn't have to. But I'm going to have to emotionally prepare myself now for that he might. That hurt my soul. I'm not kidding. I've still got a lump in my throat now. <sighs> Man. Jim had to shoot the medical ship out of the sky. Out of the... You know what I mean when I say sky. That was horrific. A lot happened in this episode. A lot. Poor Jim. And I really felt for the people on the medical ship as well because it was like, they're not doing anything wrong. They, they're like... They are the heroes in this story. They've heard that this awful thing has happened. They've gone to try and help. But they weren't able to trust. And why would they? Because, you know, it's just an absolute all round shitty situation where you know these people are dying for not because they're bad people or they've done anything enormously wrong but just because they cannot be allowed to imperil further lives that was awful 
I can't imagine what it would feel like to have to push that button. I really felt for Joe. I was on the verge of tears, actually, when he was having to do that, especially when he was like, God damn it. When he stopped, I just felt that, like, God, I'd be sick. I probably would be physically sick if I had to make that decision. Because you, there's, even though you know it's right, like, I'm, he, he made the right call in my book. I know there might be people who disagree. For me, he had to make that call. But, Jesus, what, you know, I think it's different when you have to make a call to kill an actual baddie, and you still feel bad, but you're like, they were real shit, these are just good people trying to help, but in the process of doing so, becoming a problem, oh my god, that was amazing. Oh, that was great. That was really great. Thank you to The Expanse for another absolutely phenomenal episode of television. Oh. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>